The 1998 Yasu submersible incident was a naval skirmish that occurred off of the southern coast of South Korea between December 17 and 18, 1998. On the evening of December 17, a South Korean observation post sighted a North Korean semi-submersible naval vessel in the vicinity of the city of Yasu. The semi-submersible was discovered and sunk during a subsequent search and skirmish on the morning of December 18. Chapter 1, Background Chapter 1 Section 1, North-South Relations Then-President of South Korea Kim Dae-yung advocated a more conciliatory approach to North Korea to foster cooperation and peace between the two countries, known as the Sunshine Policy. However, the Sunshine Policy was strained throughout 1998 as North Korea continued to conduct seaborne infiltrations and provocations against South Korea. In June, a North Korean Yugo class submarine became entangled in a fishnet off of the South Korean coast near Sokcho, and in November a semi submersible was again discovered in waters near the city of Gangwa. Chapter 1 Section 2 SB 10H Semi Submersible An improved version of the SB 10 semi submersible, the SB 10H, was put into service by the Korean People's Navy in 1995. It had a length of 12.8 meters, a width of 2.96 meters, and a maximum speed of 38 knots. The vessel that was salvaged in the Yasu incident was reportedly equipped with GPS and its surface was coated with a special radar absorbent paint. The vessel could accommodate a crew of 6 or 7. Chapter 2 Incident Chapter 2 Section 1 Sighting on December 17, 1998, at 23.15, soldiers at a coastal surveillance post reported sighting a low-profile vessel maneuvering two kilometers from the coast. Fifteen minutes later, two Republic of Korea Navy patrol boats were dispatched to search the area, but did not discover the vessel. Chapter 2 Section 2 Engagement At approximately 1.40 the following day, a semi-submersible was detected heading towards international waters, and two patrol boats gave chase. The semi-submersible was confirmed at 4.38 by the rocks Guangmong, and at 4.45 it was detected by airborne surveillance. At approximately 5.35, the vessel reduced its speed 100 km, south of Koche Island. South Korean vessels that were in pursuit reportedly fired warning shots and the semi-submersible fired upon them in response. At approximately 5.48 the ROX Nam-1 fired on the semi-submersible with its guns, sinking it. One hour later, the body of a North Korean sailor was recovered with a live hand grenade. Chapter 2 Section 3, Recovery On January 20, 1999, the Navy announced that a wrecked semi-submersible vessel was discovered 450 meters from the site of the sinking at a depth of 150 meters. On January 22, it was announced that another body was discovered in the stern of the ship with a rifle and live ammunition. The semi-submersible was recovered on March 17, 1999, by the rocks Kyong Hejin, and another two casualties were discovered inside. Chapter 3 Aftermath. The Navy attempted to recover the bodies of the dead North Koreans and pieces of the infiltration craft. The body of one North Korean frogman was found. From the size and type of the vessel it was assumed that the entire crew consisted of four sailors and that all had died. Searches were also conducted on nearby land to make sure that infiltrators had not landed on the coastline. When questioned, the North Korean government denied sending the vessel or knowing anything about its origins. This incident helped fuel increasing tensions between the two governments and an even larger naval skirmish was fought the next year. The North Korean regime's Korean Central News Agency issued a statement on December 19, 1998. The South Korean puppets said that they located a submarine in the sea off Yasu, South Jolla province, at 11.15 p.m. on December 17 and had a battle in which the submarine was sunken and they brought a dead body clad in diving suit to the land. They also said that they issued an order called Jindogi NN.1 throughout the coastal areas of South Korea, 
and have been put on the red alert. This time, too, the puppets described the incident as the intrusion by the North, shifting the blame onto the North. This frantic anti-communist campaign is a continuation of the anti-communist, anti-North campaign such as the fiction of the intrusion of the North's vessel near the coast of the Kangwa Island on the West Sea of Korea and the description of a flock of birds as something mysterious in the sea off the Kangwa Island. The incidents have nothing to do with the North. Now the South Korean are trying hard to find a pretext for unleashing a war against the North in line with the US imperialists' moves, for war against the DPRK. It goes without saying that the North's submarine infiltration incident is a farce cooked up for that purpose. We can no longer remain a passive onlooker to the South Korean continuous anti-communist campaign and slander against the North. The campaign can convince no one. We will take resolute measures, so that the provokers may drink a bitter cup. We seriously warn the South Korean not to act rashly.